Hey, what's going on everyone? Brian here, and welcome to our class on the history of psychology. Now, since this is the first video of an introductory course, what I wanted to do was introduce you to the word psychology real quick. So the word psychology is actually derived from two separate Greek words. The first one being psyche, or the mind, and the second is logos, or knowledge. So when someone's talking to you about psychology, what they're actually talking about is the study of the mind. When we're talking about the history of psychology, many people like to race towards the founding father or early ideas such as functionalism and structuralism. However, we have to rem remind ourselves that science always builds upon someone else's work. So we have to ask ourselves the question, what were the founding fathers of psychology basing their work upon? So to answer that question, we can look towards ancient Greece and its famous philosophers such as Plato and Aristotle. By analyzing their work and the arguments that they would have in the School of Athens, we can take away several core concepts from which psychology was built upon. For example, we can see in their arguments that they had disagreements between the body and the mind, or more importantly, the differences between the conscious and unconscious human experience. We can see research methods being developed and people having preferences for what type of research method they even use. For example, Plato was a huge fan of introspection and the unconscious experience. On the contrary, his student Aristotle was a fan of observation and empirical evidence. We also see early humans beginning to question the source of knowledge. Where does knowledge come from? How can you trust what someone tells you? Or more importantly, how do you know what you know? Now that we've briefly discussed some of the groundwork for psychology to be built upon, let's go ahead and take a look at the founding of psychology. Now, for a textbook answer, we're going to say that psychology was found in 1879 by our magnificently bearded friend here in the middle. His name is Wilhelm Boom, and the reason he's accredited with being the founding father of psychology is because he found the first laboratory dedicated to the scientific study of psychology at the University of Leipzig in Germany. Since this is just an introductory class, there's four things that I really want you to understand about Wilhelm Boom. The first one is what we've just previously discussed. He's accredited as the founding father of psychology. The second thing that I want you to take away from this is that he believed that psychology should focus on the study of the mind. Now, understanding how Wundt approached psychology is pivotal in, in understanding early schools of psychological thought, such as structuralism, which he played a big role in. The third thing that I want you to understand about Wundt is much like Plato, he was a major fan of introspection. Now this is important to understand because Wundt was the founding father of psychology and he was an influential psychologist at the time. So if you want to understand how psychology was progressing as a science, you have to understand that most of it was done through research methods such as introspection. The final item that you really need to understand about Wundt is that he attempted to break the mind down into its elementary components. To understand why Wundt was doing this, you have to understand that psychology just became a science. So Wundt was trying to behave just like scientists behave. For example, biological scientists at the time were trying to take the structure of cells and break them down into their elementary components. So Wundt attempted to break the mind down into its elementary components, such as sensation and perception, or things like feelings. So now that we've discussed Wundt a little bit, I want to go ahead and take a look at two early forms of psychological perspectives, structuralism and functionalism. The first field of thought to ever emerge from psychology was known as structuralism. Now, structuralism's key contributors were both Wilhelm Wundt and one of his students, Edward Titchener. Now, Edward Titchener was an American psychologist that was known for bringing structuralism from Germany to America. Now, at the core, structuralism hoped to identify the nature of the conscious experience, and by doing so, break the mind down into its most elementary components such as individual sensations, feelings, or perceptions. Although structuralism is no longer an active field within psychology today, it's important to understand that the work of Edward Titchener and Wilhelm Wundt and the ideas of structuralism help solidify psychology's presence as a science. The second field of thought that we're going to be taking a look at was known as functionalism. Now, functionalism was brought about as a direct response to structuralism, and its key contributors were William James and the philosopher John Dewey. So the main thing that I want you to understand about functionalism is that functionalists always ask the same types of questions. They were curious and wanted to find a practical use for consciousness. So for example, psychologists like William James in his research concluded that behavior 
was nothing more than a survival mechanism used by humans in their environment. So overall, functionalism attempted to understand the correlation between mental processes and human behavior. So now that we've talked about some early schools of thought within psychology, let's wrap up the video with the main points that we've talked about so far. So there's three things that I absolutely have to have you take away from this video. The first one is that psychology actually was derived from two different Greek words. The first one, psyche, and the second was logos. And when someone is talking to you about psychology, what they're talking about is the study of the mind. Now the second thing that I want you to take away from this video is the appreciation for Wilhelm Wundt's work. By founding the first official laboratory dedicated to the scientific study of psychology in 1879, he became the official founding father for psychology. The final thing that I want you to take away from this video is that structuralism was the first major field of thought to emerge from psychology, and it was soon followed in contention by functionalism and the work of psychologists such as William James. So this concludes our video on the history of psychology. Once again, everyone, my name is Brian, and we hope you learned something.